Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, Dungeons and Dragons expert, Dwarven Forge creator, and the star of the Dwarven Hunt, Stefan McCorney. And now, Rich Redman. What's up, rock and rollers? Yep. It's that time, another episode, an exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show. In, I think we're in three cities today. I'm coming from Los Angeles, my co-host, Nashville, Tennessee, and today's guest is in Seattle. We're going to have so much to talk about. Jim McCarthy, JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. How you doing, pal? Good, how you doing? Hey, man. So Crazy. I'm loving your wireless connection because the last guest we had, there was such a severe lag. And, and we're not, we're not, we, we don't want a pity party here, but this is a big job with being a professional radio host in the time of COVID and Zoom because you can have that little lag and there's a jib and jab you kind of got to do. Yeah, it's a blast. <laughs> Makes things so much fun. <laughs> What's on your plans for you? You're a family man. What are you doing tonight? Friday night, big Friday night. You guys are going to order a pizza. We are, we are getting a suka. We are getting takeout from a suka. We just got granite countertops. So we oh, really? That's food. really improving the value of your home. Yes, it should go up like $40,000. <laughs> hey, Easily. listen, Jim, you know how I'm always talking about... Now, for those that listen to this show, everyone knows that Jim is a massive Marvel fan, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I know we'll probably get into that today. You know, 23 movies. He's watched them a million times. He's encouraging me to watch all 23 movies. But now, Jim, back in the day, this was part of that documentary you did on me, Working the Dream, that you can find on YouTube. I was a dungeon master. I loved dungeon. I loved Dungeons and Dragons. And I think I was even an advanced D&D guy. But today, we got a real treat because our guest is the founder and chief sculptor of Dwarven Forge since 1996, our friend Stefan Picorni. How you doing, pal? Hey, Look at that. He's got the devil going horns guys? going, man. Uh, yeah. Woo. And it's so, <laughs> dude, it's so funny because you're coming to us from Seattle. You're like a lifelong New Yorker. We'll talk about this move that you made, but I think that you're using your girlfriend's Zoom, so it says Ann Carlton. Oh, man, that's <laughs> right. Can people see that? But it's okay, because Jim's probably in post going to put your Instagram or Facebook oh. handle on there. Oh, my God. Okay. Don't worry about it, man. All right. Yeah, no, we know. So, Ann, I met you. I thought it was four years backstage. I said, I said, are you still dating that same gal that I met you with backstage? And you're like, yeah, man, that was our first date. So you came to a Jason Aldean show. Look at that. Valentine's Day is coming up. Are you doing a good job? You're not going to buy her like a dust buster or a vacuum or anything like that, are you? Dude, I, I, I went to Flowers, 1-800-Flowers, and I ordered two dozen red roses, but I didn't realize that she's not going to be here. Oh, she, she had to fly to Georgia. She's a Georgian girl and she yeah. had to fly there. And so I'm getting the roses. They wouldn't let me change it. Right. So instead of going to her and her mother's house, they're, they're coming to me. Well, sometimes they come with that, that flower food that you can put in the water and they'll last a good week or a week and a half or something. So hopefully she'll come back to some, some red roses. But listen, yeah. for a lot of the people that consume this show with their ear holes and their eye holes, there are a lot of musicians and creative types. What the hell is Dwarven Forge? Tell us all about that. Well, uh, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you know Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you know, usually, you know, there's a dungeon master who explains everything and right. then everyone imagines it. Yeah. But uh, sometimes it's hard to imagine everything in your head. It's like a group imagining. So you would have like graph paper and then you have little miniatures to represent who who is where. Right. So you have an idea, like, okay, there's six people playing, where are you? Uh, and there's ten monsters, where are they? So you like chess pieces, where are they? You know? And so I grew up playing um, using either markers or or unpainted miniatures because you would never had enough time to paint them. I got a bunch of painted miniatures Yo, still. Oh, yeah, they're going like I have the I got like the beholder and the green dragon and a red dragon. <laughs> It's great stuff. Nice. You're yeah. 
uh, we all have drawers of unpainted miniatures. You yes. Know, we don't talk about it, but you know, I have a few thousand painted ones. So, but, but yeah, so your company helps bring the vision closer to life. Yeah, I, I, I'm, as an artist, I got tired of putting them down graph paper, and I said, I can sculpt walls so we can put these beautiful miniatures inside walls and passages that are also three-dimensional. And so I came out with this set, you know, the rooms and passages set, and it had never been done before. So I went down to Gen Con in, uh, in Milwaukee back then. We got a 10-foot booth. And I, I created like, I had sold a painting with that money. I created like 300 or 600 prototypes. And we opened this booth for this four day show. And in, in six hours, it was sold out. So we knew we were in business. This was, and this, this, okay, this okay, beautiful. So, so yeah, the graph paper, I remember that as a dungeon master. So take us back, the history of D&D. This is a game, they call it a role-playing game, and it emerged in 1974. I was born in 70, so way back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, there was this guy named Gary Gygax, right? And he borrowed, look at this, he's wearing a Gary Gygax shirt. Gygax, that's gorgeous, man. And so this that's whole game. A rock band. A oh, rock Gygax band. is a rock band? Yeah. Wow. So is their music kind of like goblin, like kind of like art rock? It is. It, they did take the name from Gygax and, and they, the songs are about, you know, fantasy and stuff. Yeah. So when you think about fantasy and I was a big like, uh, I'm just going to go say that I on a limb as a younger man, I was nerdy. I loved Isaac Asimov, Robert Heinlein. I loved Philip K. Dick. And of course, I got into things like the Lord of the Rings and yeah. Edgar Rice Burroughs and all that. So, so Robert Gary, e. Guy Howard. yeah, Gary Gygax and his team, they were basically, they said they took the best of all these things. So like goblins, elves, dwarves, trolls, red dragons, knights, put it centaurs. And they put it all together to this game that what I loved about D and D was that it required massive teamwork and massive. Look at what character is that? Trolls as a, a troll, troll. Yeah. it required massive imagination and today everything is <laughs> everything is you are a kid so if you guys are just listening to this stefan is like sharing his like painted troll figures he's showing us his multi-sided dice he's showing us his rock band t-shirts that is what is that character that's a, a hill giant or something oh i love uh, giants because uh. If you have giants or if you have dragons or if you have, there's all different kinds like water giants, tree giants, rock, di different types of giants. Either way, they're dangerous and you're going to want to run like hell. Or you can negotiate. You can negotiate. So, so I was watching this, the bread and butter of your business. I was, it was, it's dungeons, right? And then there was caverns, right? So, and this stuff ain't cheap, man. You guys, like an average set of like, of the dungeons are going to be a couple hundred bucks, right? But they'll last a lifetime. That, that's, that's a beginner starter set. Okay. A couple hundred. Yeah. You know? The, my, most of my customers you want the good stuff that you'd be surprised when we run a kickstarter uh the average the average backer the average pledge is like a thousand five hundred dollars i mean that means that thousands of people there's so that's the average there's some dudes that are that are playing dungeons and dragons in their mom's basement they're 36 still living at home would come get your suppers ready and they've got a well, game of advanced D&D &D uh, going on in the it, it, it's it's evolved it's evolved well, now we have movie ask. stars playing you know Joe, Joe Stephane, Manganiello do you, re and, do you, you resemble know. that remark I mean the, that whole notion of people being in their mother's basements and you know, is it kind yeah, of like, no, it's, it's that, completely, not, you take offense like that to that at all? Or? Are, there, are there some hot girls playing advanced D&D &D or what? There are hot girls, Satine Phoenix, my, my co-star of Destination Fantastic, a TV show they were trying to come out with. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Joe oh, Is she like your co-host or something? Plays. Huh? Is she like your co-host or something? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're, we're, we're coming out, you know, Legion M. They came out with, uh, uh, like, Mandy with Nicolas Cage. Oh, great film. And, and, Zombie film, and, right? And, and Tolkien, the Tolkien film. They're, yeah. they're, they're in our corner. They're, we're going to try to get this TV show about geeks like us traveling around the world, playing D&D, &D, like in Iceland. And, yeah. 
you know, New Zealand, all kinds of places, playing the game, checking out fantastical places. Yeah. Destination Fantastics coming soon. I love that. Well, congratulations. Now, this makes me think we're jumping all over the dang place here. But what, what got you on my radar is that my buddy, Carl Ray Jackson, our longtime steel player, he watched your documentary. Next thing I know, I'm meeting your – so the documentary is called The Dwarvenaut, and you could get it on a physical – DVD. It's a it's an award winning documentary. So well done. Now I rented it and rewatched it again in standard definition for a dollar ninety nine on Amazon. You can get the high definition for two ninety nine. So guys, guys and gals, you got to do this. You got to watch this documentary. Our friend. Josh Bishop, who we've had on this very podcast, he's an award-winning filmmaker uh, known for his film Made in Japan, which won all the awards at South by Southwest a couple years back. He decides to make this film. It comes out in 2016. He directs it. He writes all the music, and it is so. It it's got so much heart. It's got so much humanity. There's and there's either there's even good and evil in it. You know, you have kind of like a run-in with a with a guy and. You know, you get up uh, in the morning, hung over after partying. To I mean, it's a great documentary. They they basically followed me around for like a year. I went to conventions. They came with me. They came to my office. They watched me work. They filmed everything for a year. They had like three hundred hours of footage, and they just spliced it all together into like you know an hour. You know, that's an editor's yeah. nightmare. But they did an amazing job. Yeah. 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 So, and then I, I didn't even know that I was going to be the narrator, you know, because right. they, they had so much of my voice talking about stuff that they just, they spliced it all together. And I ended up narrating my own documentary. Yeah. And if you look on IMDb, you're the only um, cast member listed. So it's like, wow, you're right. It's like, you're, you're the starring man. One person. A starring yeah. one man only. So looking back five years later, um, is it all fondness? Is it holds up? Oh, I, the music is really good. So oh, the music like is to, really great. Yeah, I like to listen because there's music, and uh, you know, obviously for me, it's very emotional yeah. seeing it because it, yeah. it talks about my parents and adoption, and you know, come, you know, it, it's you know. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. You know, tell us about your your. Tell us a little bit about your your ethnic background and your journey to America and becoming an artist. I mean, I, you know, I was an orphan. I, I was an orphan uh, born in Korea. My father was in the military. My mother was Korean. My father was American and they, they had me. And then this is after the Korean War. Right. And then, I don't know, they were together for like a year. Then uh, he went back to America. I was with my mother for another year. And then for some reason, I, I don't know, I've never met them, I've never talked to them. She gave me to the adoption center. Mm -hmm. And after a half a year, um, you know, they, they shopped me around. They, they, no one was biting because I was already like two years old. You know, it's harder to, to adopt a kid. Than, you know, everyone wants a baby. Sure. So, and then, then I saw some couple in America was interested. So they, they shipped me to America, but then they already had a child. And I didn't get along, I guess you have a trial period. I didn't get along with the kids, so they sent me back. Wow. And But they're like, oh, you know, before sending back, there's this older couple in New York City. We don't want to adopt them because they're too old. But then again, you're also too old. So maybe, maybe we'll make this work. You know, it's the last chance. So there I was, uh, introduced <laughs> to this uh, Italian mother and Czechoslovakian father, immigrants, just mm -hmm. like me, all three yeah. of us immigrants. Amazing. Who came to America? We are living the American dream, and they we immediately hit it off. They're like, "Ah, oh, we love them!" And I grew up there in, in the middle of Manhattan with uh, these two Europeans. Amazing. And then you are, and then you. When did the your penchant for um, drawing and creativity begin? Oh well, they, they, my mother, Italians, immediately took me to Italy and took me around Europe. Uh, and my father's also European. They took me everywhere traveling. So immediately I went from museum to museum and I was a very energetic kid. And, and the only way I could, they could settle me down was to give me like crayons. And so I would draw all the time. And then they started to realize I was good at it. And, uh, and so having seen all these great masters all over Europe and drawing all the time, I think, and my father was an architect. 
So it all kind of came together, I think. Beautiful. And then in New York City, art capital world, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, my, my parents were like, this kid is crazy. He's got tons of energy. They handed me a pair of drumsticks. I mean, they were some brave souls right there. Here's one of my, this is like, for instance, one of my <laughs> oil paintings. Oh, that's gorgeous. So you guys wow. that are that are just listening, Stefan's showing us one of his oil paintings. So you you keep that sharp, that um, that bone itched or that scratch itched? Yeah, well, I, now instead of painting, I was sculpting these pieces. I sculpt the, uh, wow. like this is a, a piece inspired by Iceland. We just traveled to Iceland to shoot the first episode of Destination Fantastic. That looks great. And is that with your hands or do you use tools? Yeah. Or Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, well, you tools, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, tool, man. Do you find that people are more... Extension. Do you find that people hands. are more fascinated with uh, the fantasy type of uh, storytelling uh like in the past couple of years, I didn't you know, Marvel has certainly had a big. You find that people are more fascinated with fantasy um, activities oh. or you know stuff like that in the past couple of years. Is that ramped up? Do you find? I mean, I, I don't know. I grew up in New York City, so there was always so much fantasy and things. I mean, I remember when like I used to read heavy metal magazines. Yeah, and the blues yeah. came out and. Conan the Barbarian came out. I saw it in the theaters. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a lot of Frank Frazetta. Oh, you know, I, I love Frazetta. To, went to high school with art and design. You yeah. know, it, it just seems like in the last 20 years. Yeah. In the last 20 years or so, even more than that, you've had Harry Potter ramp up. You've oh. had all the Lord of the Rings movies. You know, Marvel obviously came into yeah. play and is, is one of the biggest franchises, if not the biggest movie franchise out there right now. I mean, people just want to get, they want to escape, you know. I, and that I seems, feel, uh, you're right. That Like the Lord of the Rings, when that came out, that did something. Yes. Lord of the Rings yep. and then Game of Thrones and Game Harry Potter. Yes. It's like a renaissance. Even the Twilight series. The Twilight series yeah. is massive. Yeah. 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 Do you, you know, feel like that's ex just... uh, is that is that um influencing um <clears throat> chiching sales for you guys? Is that is that it's gotta be helping things, right? Yes. I believe it is. I so but I so. I love also the, the new edition, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. They came out with the fifth edition. Well, like, this is very interesting because when I was playing Dungeons and Dragons, this would have been, uh, let's see, I was in the seventh or eighth grade, so I probably would have been 13 years old, right? So I'm a dungeon master. I put a little group of guys together, and I'm, I've got a lot of the um, pre-designed modules, and then, of course, I wanted to create my own worlds, right? And the great thing about the dungeon master is that you're kind of almost like the the the, the, the charismatic storyteller that tells her you're entering a cavern it's pitch dark do you want to light a fire what do you want to do roll a dice you have to describe things and it's all such imagination because we're living in a world where everything is spelled out and everything is right now and hollywood doesn't leave any cliffhangers and everything is sewed up neatly so that's what was really really kind of fascinating about it it just it really helps your creativity and your imagination you get to create your own stories. Yeah. The group together. Yeah. You know, you get to create your own adventure and be the heroes of your own adventure. And yeah. you never know where it's going to go every time you play. Yeah. This you is see, the Rich, I'm going never create. I'm going to disagree with you on one point there where Hollywood always doesn't wrap everything up in a tidy bow. Well, uh, there's a couple cinematic. of Marvel films. Yeah, there's they leave man. Yeah, that's like Infinity a, War. Yeah. That's... Yes, Infinity War was the the Empire Strikes Back of our generation. <laughs> it ended on a down note. Yeah, that was good. Everybody that's died. Good. I like that the end game or the end. What it was the. The end game was, was where everybody got, they resolved everything. But I mean, yeah. the beauty, uh, I, I've always just, you know, I, I wasn't into it until we went and saw, it was literally, my I came home from something and my wife's, hey, we're going to go see Infinity War. Oh, okay. You know, I've always kind of passively enjoyed the movies. They were fun. I had no idea that they all ran together. They were all intertwined. And then, you know, we start watching this movie and, hey, there's, you know, I remember the end of uh, Ragnarok where Thor left off and they started Infinity War with Thor and Thanos now really emerging into the whole scenario and the timeline. And then uh, they brought in um, the Guardians of the Galaxy. That was the first iteration of like, oh, wow, they're a part of this too. Yeah. <laughs> and then Doctor Strange was, oh, he's a part of this. <laughs> I was completely 
not aware. That that Stan Lee is one creative guy. <clears throat> he is the man. God rest and, his soul. And Jim, it's interesting how you say that your wife got you into it because it was my girlfriend and Carlton who got me into the Marvel. And I, and this has been a big shift. No, I was I was I was always a past. My wife wasn't into it. We just she just said, "Hey, we're going to go see a movie." It was very casual. Okay. And you know, well, we'll go You're see not a huge film. fan. Oh, yeah. yeah. But dude, ever since that movie came out, oh my gosh. Yeah. I've become well, a, just a geek. This <laughs> is a shift because in the in when I remember when, when I was young, <laughs> it was mostly a guy thing, all this sort of stuff. Mostly, yeah. I don't know, it was mostly a guy thing, but now more and more women are into it, and that's yeah. been a big shift. I know, yeah. like Dungeons and Dragons, it used to be all men, and that's mm-hmm. changed. And now, and now, there's just as many women playing as as men. That's great. You know, I think the same trajectory, thing. a similar trajectory, was experienced by Rush, the band. Oh, it was explain, dudes. There was always like five girls at a Rush concert, and that was about it. And they, that was a—I mean, even they—they they even make fun of themselves. I want to say at the end of uh, "I Love You," man, I love you, man. And in one of the outtakes, they yeah. go backstage, and uh, the Rush trio are walking down the down the hallway after they go to you know they finish their concert. And Neil Peart even says he's like, "Yeah, that was a good show. I think we had like seven girls in the audience." <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> It was such a great, like, throwing shade on themselves type of gag. Yeah. So now tell us a little bit about how a big part of the doc was the idea of using this crowdsourcing thing called Kickstarter. And I don't even know if Kickstarter is as big as it was four, five, six years ago. Tell us why you turned to that platform and why you're still using it. Uh, we were one of the first ones that in the gaming industry that really hit it big. Like I remember the uh, uh, Reapers, Reaper Miniatures had the first like big Kickstarter and everyone was blown away. They did a Kickstarter called Bones and it's for unpainted miniatures and they were um, white and that's why they called it Bones. And yeah. they sold like a couple of million, two or three million dollars. And everyone in the industry was like, holy cow, look at how much they sold on this Kickstarter. And I remember distinctly when I saw that, I immediately got scared. And I was like, oh, my God, we have to run a Kickstarter immediately because if we don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And right now we, we make the best terrain. And if someone makes a Kickstarter with terrain, they'll blow us out of the water. So I was in, in the panic, I called up my partner and I was like, listen, we got to do a Kickstarter right now. And we immediately set to work and we came out with uh, a Kickstarter, first Kickstarter for, I think it was 2012. Maybe. Right. And, um, and it was a hit, you know, we, we stole like $2 million. And, and so that was, I think probably the second, the second big one in the gaming industry. Right. And it was probably all industries was big, you know, yeah. I mean, and, and we've been consistently around that. Our, our best Kickstarter was just recently during the pandemic. We had four million dollars in backers. Yeah. Well, it's essentially it's essentially free money. It's brilliant, but you have to create an impetus. Well, I, for, I well what what money. do you provide the the, the <laughs> people? You gotta provide something. You I know, but something. so what is it that you provide to, for the to the fans and well, the it, It's like a pre order is what it is. Like a okay. pre order. You like give us a hundred dollars and you'll get this when we make it. Gotcha. Right. Give us a thousand, you'll get even more. You get this, and for supporting the Kickstarter, we're going to throw in some extra stuff. Nice, because you're helping us make it. So you're going to get a great deal by being an early adapter, early supporter, yeah. and that's why everybody. And and the way you you figure it out, you're like, whoa! If if a, a hundred more people back it, you're going to get an extra item. If a two hundred, you get an extra item. So all the people that are in it, it's good for them to get other people to get into it. Because if it goes like viral, you know, then they get more free stuff. I love that. And that's what in this day and age of, you know, Twitter and, and Instagram was, that's what, that's why we do. We launch we, on Facebook and everyone shares it and you get more and more people. So it's a great way to get, get your, your Kickstarter out there. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it's all good all over you, the world. Participants from all over. It's the good world. that you make it manageable. Like all you have to do is mail out um, a piece of a dungeon or some stalactites or stalagmites. It's not like you have to go to Russia and cut someone's lawn. You know, it's, it's like, I will come cut your lawn. You would not believe it. It's very, very complicated. <laughs> I have a whole team of people. It, 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 we make it look easier than it is. Has your team grown since the documentary in 2016? Uh, yeah. 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 So business uh, is yeah. good. Yeah, they're growing. It's growing and growing. I have about 25 people now. Yeah. When I started it, there was like three or four. Uh, That's great. And so I remember in the documentary you saying, I am not a business guy, but I think I you've probably grown into a business guy in the last several years. I, I have a little bit of entrepreneurship in me, yeah. but I'm more of an artist than, you know, I'm an artist that wants to eat. I, yeah. <laughs> eating is good. Now, what is, yeah. what is, um, what does Ann Carlton do? And, you know, and I met her, our first date was at the Jason Aldean concert. That's awesome. <laughs> Remember when we came backstage and I was like, I was, I was hot for it. I was like, I, I, I gotta, let's go uh, see this concert. I mean, but that's a good first date. You're like, Hey, we're going yeah. backstage and getting preferential I, uh, treatment. I had the ace card. Yeah, you, know? you did. We, we came down I said, and, and I said, Oh my God, we're sitting really close. We're here. We went down to the 10 for row, you know, and then, <laughs> you're all like, yes, we are, you know? And then, um, uh, no, it was odd. Then we came backstage, and uh, it was it was awesome. Yeah, you know? man. And the the, the uh, gosh. What city was that? Was that Mass Square Garden? Mass Square Garden. Oh my God, buddy, that's yeah. a good one to bring a girl to. Tenth row at Mass Square Garden is a good seat. Yeah. Was she kind of into the uh, what you're into, like Dungeons and Dragons, as well? At the time, did you know? A little bit, yes, a little right. bit. She's uh -huh. very geeky, and I, she loves so, the Marvel movies. That's what nice. she really loves. But she's also played D&D. And now when I run games, she helps me. She moves around. We do it via Zoom because that's what we have to do these days, Zoom. And then see, yeah. I'll talk to the people and then she runs the, the thing. And I look, I can show you my camera. I can put so you there. guys are playing advanced D&D via Zoom. Can you see the dungeon? On that's the incredible. Oh, I my mean, gosh. Dude, your whole so place is the, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Amazing. That. On that table. Yeah. And while I talk and wear costumes and stuff like that. So Constantly. you guys are doing Zoom campaigns. They're usually more like celebrity games. I get invited by a convention to do a, a, a game and they might have like uh, people known in the industry or like mm -hmm. we had... I ran a game with Joe, Joe Manganiello nice. and Luke Gygax, the son of the creator. Wow. And uh, well, what was her name? Um, Amber Moon, WWE oh, championship yeah. wrestler. That's cool. Yeah. He plays D&D. &D. There, there's a lot of, you know, celebrity type people now playing D&D. &D. They love it. Oh, and, man. Uh, so what it's the main, I remember when I was starting, there was the Dungeon Master's Manual, there's the Player's Handbook, and there was the Monster Manual. As it, it's grown since then, right? Now we're in the fifth edition. So yeah. what what changes in each edition? New rules, new monsters. Yeah, they they, they changed the rules. They grew, they evolved, and now what we found is that the fifth edition is sort of going back more to the first edition, but like like making it much more. Like in the early days, it was really male oriented. You know, and and now it's they made a huge effort to be like, listen, this isn't a game for just men. Let's right. stop with the bikini-clad women warriors. Yeah, that are like, listen, they wouldn't be like that fighting. You know, the women object to that sort of thing. Well, that's mm -hmm. the now if, if, they show the women with armor, and you know, they there's more stories Lady involved. Sif. You know, they, yeah. there's a, uh, there's a, even like on TikTok, if you come across some of these cosplayers, which I imagine, oh. are you into that as well? The cosplaying, you know, that, that's also a thing that's come into game. What the hell yeah. is that? Yeah. Cosplay is where like you dress up like your favorite or, character. Yeah. 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 And uh, there are a lot of women on TikTok that, you know, get a lot of following mm -hmm. because they dress up as like Velma from uh, Scooby-Doo. But it's like a voluptuous Velma. <laughs> yeah, that got a lot no. of women. She's got huge trucks of land. 
and she's doing suggestive posing. And uh, even like girls who, have you seen like, do they have the body painters that go to those things oh, <clears throat> where they'll play, paint like armor on their bodies, but they're walking around with their boobs out pretty much? Some of the costumes are amazing. You I know, know. And, and, and not just women, men too. Yeah. And so the thing and is, all is, kinds of people, dude, you know, uh, when, whatever your when, orientation, you feel yeah. welcome at these conventions. When you see them, I mean, the artistry is incredible, the way they airbrush the actual costumes onto their skin. But as a dude, all you're doing is trying to find out what their boobs look like, you know, through the paint. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a guy. What Clearly you, you are from the older world. <laughs> <laughs> he's, from, he's not from Valoria. We've evolved. We don't just look at the boobs anymore. You know? But, I mean, they're right there. I mean, they're just like, hey, like it's like the no. woman. You ever see the, no. the video of the girl walking around New York City with painted on jeans, literally painted on jeans? Wow, I like that. Yeah. I mean, and, she would do, she would, and there, were, there was a guy following her with a camera to catch the reactions from people. And they all thought, I mean, not were, there weren't that many people reacting to it. She was wearing like Daisy yeah. Duke kind of short shorts. Actually, I thought they might have been City. Long That's normal in yeah. New York. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the naked cowboy? Is he still in Times Square? Well, I guess not. Probably not uh, like out there. Is. He is? Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. So what brought you to Seattle? Was it uh, well, Anne or what? Three masks. Do you want to... Well, I, I wanted to change the scenery Yeah. and having grown up in, in, in New York city, you know, you need change, you know, like, like in Dune, you know, they said the sleeper has to awaken, you know, something yeah. sleeps inside of you unless you go to another. So I'm, I'm here, there's water. You know, I went, came from the land of skyscrapers and steel and the sound of jackhammers. Yep. And now I feed squirrels on my deck. Oh, squirrels are great. They're little mischievous oh. bastards. I mean, oh, they are God. all over Nashville. When I was in Nashville a couple of weeks ago, I mean, they are everywhere. And, and you know what we have out here? In Seattle. There's gaming, gamers. Wizards yeah. Wizards is out here. Peter Atkinson, my, my buddy who owns Gen Con, biggest convention, gaming convention in, in America. You know, so was there a Gen people. Con in 2020? If there was, it had to be in the first three months, right? Virtual, virtual reality. Oh, wow, you did virtual. it. Wow. And this year, I think it's going to be virtual again. I think, the, I think the convention industry is going to be completely changed by this thing. Yeah. I know that I'm probably going to be presenting at the Percussive Arts Society International Convention where drummers and percussionists from around the world converge. I don't know if we're going to do it in real time because it's in November. I don't know if we're going to have this thing tamed. It's all about the, the vaccine. Yeah. The Rich Redman Show will be right back. Those who are self-employed, especially musicians, think homeownership is unattainable. For Bruce Klein, it took seven years to purchase his first home as a self-employed working musician. But once he did, man, was it satisfying. So he decided he wanted to help other musicians and creatives gain that same satisfaction. Bruce earned his lending license and is now helping people avoid the mistakes he made on his seven-year journey. If you're a self-employed musician, he can help. Go to musiciansmortgage.com, powered by Movement Mortgage. Bruce Klein, NMLS, number 1465948. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS, number 39179. NMLS, consumeraccess.org. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. This is the Rich Redman Show. You coffee guy? That's the birthplace of Starbucks coffee right there. Yeah, but you know, the Seattleites don't like Starbucks that much. Yeah, I guess it's like an Australian guy eating, drinking Fosters. They're they don't like, drink ah, Fosters. They, that's too commercial. Yeah, they drink Coors you Light. go to this other smaller coffee yeah. place, you know. <laughs> totally. But I would want to go to Pike's Place for sure and get a, a, an original oh. cup of the original deal. 
there's a lot of good food there. But yeah. It's chowder and, and chowder. cheese. Wicked pizza. Chowder. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they throw fish around. We were watching. You ever watch that show, Wicked Tuna? You ever watch that show? I think it's on Disney Plus. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed the other day, and this kind of sort of ties into what we're talking about. You ever watch the talking heads, the interstitials? It, it had dawned on me how they say the most obvious things on this. On these Stupid shows. stuff, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's like, you know, if we don't bring this fish into the boat, we don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they literally say stuff like this. And my wife and I are going, did he just say that? I mean, that's. I think they get yeah, prompted. I think they they, oh, they totally get prompted. things like that. I need you to say uh, something about bringing, you know, uh, buying gas for the boat. Okay, buying for, the, you know, if if this fish doesn't bring enough home to cover our expenses, we're not going to be able to put gas in the boat, and the boat won't go. Yeah, but it's. I'm sure the the, the director really? like, you got to say that so the viewers will know what's going on. Oh exactly. my gosh, it, it's the uh, most ridiculous. I mean, I counted probably 15 lines of going. You know, when we put the boat in the water, if we hit a rock, it'll probably sink. No shit. You're funny. <laughs> You're funny, Jim. I, I had a I had a good uh, Jim. I I had a good day in Hollywood yesterday. Thanks to you, I auditioned. I did a voiceover for an, a voiceover audition for a cartoon. So I sent my voiceover audition to Jim, and he dropped it into his software, and he added some nice EQ to it and stuff for me. And then I auditioned to be the host of a children's backyard makeover show. Like kids, we're gonna rip this all up, put it in a fire pit, a pool, and a giant screen TV, and maybe some rope swing. I think I could do that job. Totally. We'll see. We'll see, though. I'm up against a million other. I think uh, you even said you were like, "Hey, I mowed lawns once. I, I'd be good for this." No, I totally had to. I had to comment on my yard work experience. So I said, "Yeah, I raked Let leaves, I shoveled snow, and I, yeah, I was like, I was a childhood entrepreneur." <laughs> I'm going. Rich moves into his house. I got to tell this story. Uh, well, probably ten years ago or so. Yeah, ten years ago. Yeah. And uh, you're like. You know, he goes, I need to get a lawn boy. I'm like, well, that's a good brand. <laughs> I said, I have a lawn boy. It's a great mower. I mean, I've had it since uh, 2005 at the time. <laughs> it was 2009. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm getting a lawn boy. I had someone to cut my lawn. <laughs> wow. I don't cut my own lawn. You know how thick close that comes to your foot? I was, I was like in my mind going, dude, I'm proud of you. You cut your own lawn. That's kind of cool. And he's like, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. I'm like, well, lawn boy is a brand of lawnmower. That's actually. Lawn <laughs> I have a lawn now. Yeah. I never had something like that. I have a lawn. It's kind of like a delightful nuisance. It really is. You know, the fact that you. my mind. Yeah. The fact that you have <laughs> dirt and, and, and grass is amazing. <sighs> And they're oh, critters. They're, they're <clears throat> the crows peck at the grass. Yeah. And you're wondering what the lawn. Doing. Yeah. yeah, as you get older, it, you know, when you mow the lawn when you're a kid, it's a chore. It's a, you don't enjoy it. But as you get older, you know, Rich, you wouldn't know about this. But you know, for guys like us, you know, we mow the lawn and stuff. It's it's an escape. It's thinking. I don't time. mow the lawn. <sighs> when I, I mow pay the lawn, people it's to do that. Time. I don't mow the lawn. And does it? Come on. No. We have a, a team of people that come over and they mow it. And they come it's up good. with the blowers. And they, they blow all the leaves everywhere and they scare Try the squirrels. It. Try it yourself one time, and ju it's so cathartic. It's just so, just you put your headphones on, you think, ah, you're just going back and forth, creating stripes. I'll probably hit something. I, I, oh, I don't, cares? I'm a New Yorker. I don't know how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day when Kurt and Tully and I were the guys in my band, we were all living together, I was the guy that did all the yard maintenance for the landlord oh, because, yeah, those guys slept till 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and that was my way of waking them up. But they're out there cutting the, and there'd be okay, some so giant be hornet's stirred. nest out in the corner. And you'd stir up the hornets and have to go running from the hornets. We have and, murder hornets now. Murder. <laughs> dude, the, and, and you know what they call it? A murder of crows. There's tons of crows in LA. And what I do is I'll, there'll be like a murder of them, right? They'll be hanging out yeah. on one person's. And then I'll, I'll, I'm such a wise ass. I'll take a running start and run so fast right into the middle of them. And they just go scattering everywhere. It's uh. so fun. They remember that. They're going to remember you. Yeah, and they'll come peck like my it. eyeballs out. We, I, we feed them. We made friends with them. They, they wait for us in the morning. We come out and whatever scraps of stuff we don't eat, we, we offer to them. And they're they, all sitting uh, there like, you know, 
you know. With Rich, when he runs at him, they're marking his name down on the list. They're all like, yeah. We, we have a bunch of, yeah. it's like a zoo. Yeah. We have birds. We have eagles. We got squirrels. Yeah. We got yeah. raccoons. That is a nice change for you, man. Possums, all that kind of stuff. All the stuff. Yeah. All of it. And, and it's amazing. I used to just have rats and cockroaches. Yeah. Remember you know, see, yeah. here in it's Nashville, great. Rich, have you ever seen an armadillo? Um, a live one? No, always dead on the side of the road. They're always dead. Yeah, we never see them alive. Well, in Tennessee, they're like, "Hey, that's dinner, man. Grab that shit." We're not bad. That's more like <laughs> Alabama. Come on. I know, but if you get twenty miles out of Nashville, it gets very banjoy. Yeah. Gang dong, gang dong, gang dong. Right. Well, that's where Josh yeah. lives. He, he lives in Nashville now. Yeah, Josh is fantastic. We had him on the show. And it makes me think, we're talking about birds, we're talking about murders of crows. You know, they were Michael Bay was supposed to remake the birds, Hitchcock's The Birds. And that would be so amazing, right? Because we have CGI, we have all, you right? It's like Transformers meet the, you right. know, <laughs> the birds. But it makes me think about how Josh's first job in the music and the, in the movie industry was working for Michael Bay. And he realized, oh my God, these are this is too many mouths to feed and too many people to keep happy. I'm gonna make my own independent, fully controlled films. He decided right then and there. And he's doing it, man. Yeah. Did a great job. Direct the uh, destination fantastic. Is he going to? Yeah. That's great, man. Really? I, yeah. I tell you what, if I don't talk to somebody for six months, amazing things happen, man. It's like it's like when Han Solo got out of the carbonite and he's like, you know, yeah, I'm gone for a little bit and everyone's <laughs> Dude, that was uh that was, you know, the the end game of the Star Wars series. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, you gotta watch those movies. You know, the thing Should with Star Wars movies, doesn't Rich need to just sit down and go yeah. through all twenty three movies? I remember seeing the very first one in the theater. Yeah. It changed Hollywood. It changed everything. Well, I'm a big Spider-Man well, guy. I, I would like the, you know, and then he loved Mary Jane. And it was well, great. Spider-Man's part of the Avengers, man. He got Dude, I love Spider-Man. With him. He dies in Infinity War. Did oh, you know that? Spoiler. But did they bring him back? Yeah. Well, well I don't know. You got to find out now. Mm. Spoiler I'm gonna alert. Give a, I'm giving you a hip clinger. A, <laughs> a hip clinger. <laughs> That's what my daughter used to call them, hip clingers. Crazy. <laughs> you got to watch that. You you started, you did a screenshot of Infinity War when Spider-Man was up on the big flying donut and uh, flying into space. You're like, hey, I'm watching it finally. And I, I don't think you got past that point. No, I was, I You've think that commit. might, that might have been pre-Kara and Kara sure as hell can't no. it's to watch it. She doesn't no? want to do it? Nah. Kara has very specific, my girlfriend, Kara, has a very specific taste in films. It can't be too indie. It can't be period PC. It can't be too sci-fi murdery. It can't be cheesy funny. It's like she's got a very specific lane. So it's very limiting. So when we are apart, uh, that's when I catch up on all my horror and gore. Because I love horror and gore, and you have to really be into that right otherwise it's a miserable experience you know what i you know what movie we watched last night was uh freaky you ever see that movie it's with no. vince vaughn no it's uh, a play on freaky friday yeah where he, he changes personalities and bodies with a high school girl but he's a serial murderer that is like freaky. a mass murderer what's the year uh 2020 oh wow it's a 2020 movie it, it wasn't bad very gory so it's right Ooh, up your alley. Nice. Slasher film. So, Stefan, what's your, uh, you gonna have any like interesting hobbies or passions or interests out of art, sci fantasy, and your job of monsters and dragons and dungeons? Well, I, I recently, uh, because of the pandemic, I've gotten into poker. Yeah. Oh. So I'm, I'm always playing poker online now. And, uh, I'm getting good at it. Yeah, but are you not you're not betting money, are you? It well, I we have I do no because I was told <laughs> that they're cheaters and don't don't put real money because they game the system or not. So so I have I play on Steam, there's poker championships and it's not for money, but it's very competitive because, you know, if you don't win enough, you you have to buy more chips. Mm. You know, or you get free chips, but you also can buy them 
So if you play in the million dollar tournaments, mm. it's you you can't lose real money in a way. Oh, yeah. It's a bit competitive and um I lived in Vegas for four there. years. It's fun, a lot of fun. Never played a table game in four years when I lived in Vegas. Really? Never. Just a never lot of gamers like poker. Oh, you know? I, I could see that. <clears throat> uh, now, is there a video game version of Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, like great online? question. I think that one time there may have been an, a, a horrible Atari version. Well, I mean, you know, the online community gaming, I would imagine this is the perfect platform. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there, there something like that out there? Stefan, is there like a uh, like is there like a serious online or video game version of Dungeons and Dragons in existence? Oh, yeah, there are like no Never Winter Nights, I think. Really? There's a whole bunch of different uh but basically most video games come from Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Yes. All the systems, well, I mean, avatars, yeah. experience points, going up in levels, all these systems are from they all borrow from Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, Game of Thrones is kind of similar that's, to it too, that's right? Uh, the D and D world of that author. Was that's name? crazy. Yeah, that guy. Um, so let me ask you this: Morgan. How did this ever not come to pass? How did Dun Gary Gygax and all these guys, the early, the early guys, not get sued from the Tolkien estate? Because they, they just did. <laughs> they did. Tell us about that, because they, I mean, they, I mean, they, those... had, they they had hobbits in, and and they got sued, and they had to stop using the name hobbits, and now they're halflings. Halflings, right? Yeah. But then all, there's other characters. I mean, that it's a direct borrow. Well, you know, not not it, they borrow from all kinds of legends. Because you got orcs all right? over the world, and these are not. Tolkien also borrowed them from Norse mythology. That's true. And in fact, oh. I was just in Iceland seeking out the roots of these legends, and I saw um, the the book uh, that that Tolkien was inspired. The very earliest. Um, God, I have such a terrible memory. Like a, like it's uh, you would call it a tome, like a really thick yeah. book. Tome. Um, that had the name Gandalf yeah. in it. Wow. And I, in, in, in the episode, the first episode of Destination Fantastic, we go to Iceland and we. How see many, ep how many episodes have you shot? Just one. Okay. We, we did a Kickstarter for yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, um, that developed the interest and now we're, we're hoping to get a whole a series. Yeah, um, man. I hope that happens for you. So we started with Iceland cause that's where it all comes from. That's the earliest stories we have of fantasy come from, you know, Iceland. Did you ever try to read the Silmarillion? That was a tough read. Yeah, I, I tried. It's like, it's like basically the history of Tolkien's Middle Earth. It's very slow reading. That's, a sl that's like a snooze fest. But um, halfway through. I think <laughs> out of all the books I loved, this was really interesting the way they went after this, that Peter Jackson and, and that whole team, you got the smallest book, The Hobbit, that they actually expanded into the longest movies. So the smallest book out of all the Tolkien movies became three movies. Wow. And the scariest think, part was when they encountered all those gigantic effing spiders. I am not a spiders guy. I don't like spiders, sharks, snakes, or spiders, sharks, snakes, there's one more S, Scorpions. Yeah. The band? No, they're okay. They can rock me like a hurricane. Uh, rock you like a hurricane. Stefan, what's your, what's, your, what's your thing in, with music? This is like 20 questions with Rich Redmond today. What, what's your taste in music? Who are some standout bands that you've enjoyed over the years? I, I, I absolutely love Black Sabbath. Okay. Uh, I'm a heavy metal guy. You know, you're Black a heavy metal guy because it's so reminiscent of... Def Leppard, Zeppelin, you know, there's uh, Motorhead. Nice. I, I like heavy metal stuff. You know, Being I, I your was, Sabbath guy. You know, you I know. like the, the Jason Aldean. All right. Yeah. Hey, so we'll, we'll be like the one country act you guys like. You know, Getting it back. was rocking. It was rocking. Thanks, Bringing yeah. Marvel back into the fray here. With, All kinds uh, of <laughs> with the <laughs> With the end game thing that happened. You know how Tony Stark snaps his hands, his fingers at the end? Remember? Yeah. Some guy is taking that scene 
and saying, okay, if you remove the music from the scene and put in other music, he went and substituted Iron Man from Black Sabbath into that scene. And boy, does it fit. It is like hair. It's chilling to watch. Yeah, but that's some music supervisor that that some guy is. It's some dude on TikTok. He, He took it out and produced it up. When Thanos turns around and he has the empty glove, that's when he, when he snaps is when you hear the kick start. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> that would have been it. Would have made the scene like a hundred times better if they just did that. That's it's a dude amazing. with a lot of time on his hands, man. But you know what? It so works. Yeah. It's amazing. That's so, it. Stefan, <laughs> you got a you you got. Uh, our audience at hand here what's other than the film what's coming up for you what would you what do you want to leave with our audience how can we find you is there a dot com where are you on the socials uh dwarvenforge.com beautiful dwarvenforge.com there everything is revealed uh we have our own twitch channel we got nice you know we got we got a whole fans you know they come gamers they do live streams, um, you know, and uh, you can find everything out from there. Where can I get that Gygax shirt? Whoa, this, this is like Gygax is this band, you know, and I'm, I'm actually, you know, going to be working with them on, on with their next album. Really? Wow. What they're, are you going to do? Uh, they're, they're, you know, not a huge band, but I'm, I'm going to be the, I'm going to help them come out with vinyl records. I'm going to pay for oh, some vinyl nice you know oh you're gonna invest in them yeah I'm minor gonna, investment nice they said where, i would be like the record company I where are they based about it, but you know well you better find out really LA. quick <laughs> <laughs> they're from la yeah i'm gonna look them up man they probably live right around the corner very cool guys i dig the music it's like old school you know metal and nice. um you know guy gags and uh, the Gygax clan, they like them. They know each other. They, Beautiful. you know, they played at one of the live streams live. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's some cool stuff. Um, yeah, I, that's, I that's, I run games. I run games online, the live streams. I go to the convent. When we go back to conventions, I would love to go back to Gen Con. I would love to go back to Gary Con. Yeah. You know, um, these are great. I, I've never been to a Comic Con, dude. I got to make it happen. It's a lot of fun. I would imagine they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's right in San Diego. I mean, the, you know, the mother of all, you know, it's right there. I got to go. I got to make a trip and do it. Like, hopefully, hopefully that's not going to go online because how can you're not going to get to see all the colorful characters? Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I was there um, at the Legion M booth when they Mm -hmm. were promoting uh, Mandy and got to talk with some of the actors and yeah. it was a lot of fun they had the the paraphernalia they had the tiger shirts and they had the big axe nicholas cage uses big silver axe yeah. and they had all those props there it was a lot of fun i can't remember if i saw mandy or not if i rented it and oh, fell asleep or if i got a- the, the chainsaw fighting chainsaw you would remember that yeah i think i need oh, to yeah, yeah look at that i've got my axe nice <clears throat> whose axe is that bud axe this is Stormbreaker. Belongs to Thor. Wow. Let me ask you a question. Uh, oh, boy. That's Very nice. It's heavy, serious. too. Yeah. Very nice. Hey, Stefan, it's Friday night. What are you going to do, man? You going to order a pizza? And, and, and what's happening? We're stuck at home, so I'm going to go in my basement. I, in fact, no, I'm going to go right here. That's a fun news. Right here. I got there my brewski. Go. I got the Kieran. Oh, the Kieran, nice. That's a big one, man. Of course, there's a a, a, a creature, right? D and D creature. What about the sake? You do any of that? Yeah, sake's okay. Yeah. It's okay, but I'm I'm more of a beer guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever had sake. Yeah. It's like yeah. a it's a it's a rice wine, and you know some guys Powerful sip it. Oh, right. Oh, it's very. I, and I do prefer it cold or hot. Cold. Everyone knows the best sake is cold. I like it cold too. Yeah, I like it with my sushi. My first wife, my well, I was only married once. My my wife was uh, Japanese. Yeah. So how I long were you? How, how long were you guys Japan. married? How long were you married? About a, a year and a half, two years, something. Oh yeah, in and out, man. 
then it kind of went south and we're still for now we're friends we get yeah. along much better when we're not married yeah there's something about that piece of paper it does something to people sometimes. it does it makes crazy. them crazy Right. Hey, well, we so, had a clash of cultures, and and once we got married, we realized that it, she wanted to bring Japan to New York, and I wanted New York to to be New York, and there were expectations that were different. Yes. But once we realized, you know what, we are different, then we got along again. Yeah, man. Well, I'm hoping that this television show happens for you, man. I think if with you and Josh involved, it hopefully the world will smile on you. We want this show yeah. to like. Garrick Gen Con, uh, what a workshop, uh, Iceland, uh, yeah. Hawaii, all these cool places. And check out the most geek is the Frank Frazetta Gallery in Florida. We want to go. To, I mean, mm. all things geeky and rock and roll type stuff. That's what this show would be about. Yeah. Now, where's Frazetta? Where's the Frazetta? Actual geeks, you know? Yeah, yeah. Where's now, the Frazetta like, thing in Florida? Where's that? The floor, the Frank Frazetta gallery run by the Frazetta girls. Yeah, but where is it? Oh, what city? Uh, the exact place. Oh, God. Because I go see my folks. In, yeah. place. Okay, well, remember. I'll look it up. Hey, so Jim is going to hit you with the random question of the day, but I'm going to hit you with the fast five for first. Don't think too fast. Favorite color? What's your favorite color? Wow. Oh, he's got some tension, a tension bed for you. Yeah. Is his speaker on? Is Turn it up a little bit, bud. Yeah. It just creates some tension. It's like straight out of like American Idol or something when they're waiting to vote someone off the island for not singing well. Are we lagging on his end? Hey, Stefan, what's your favorite color? Blue. Okay. What's your favorite food? Spaghetti. Spaghetti, okay. There's yeah, you know the, the, the Italian mom there. Uh, favorite song? Currently, it's "The End" by Black Sabbath. Oh, fantastic! Favorite movie? Conan the Barbarian. Okay, oh, the, the governor, y'all. And favorite place to make love? Oh. Anywhere. Oh, it's a great <laughs> answer. People overthink that one. They really do. Yeah, and if, if, you get, if you're getting laid, that's a good place to do it. Exactly. All right. So here we go. We got the uh, random question. It's the random question, random question, random question of the day. We had a, quite a philosophical one on the last episode. This, was, uh, this one's not so philosophical. This is, um, what's the most surprising self-realization you've had? Maybe it's philosophical. Is that for me? Yeah. Oh, the most surprising what? Self-realization that you've had. Oh, God. Um, gosh. Uh, surprising realization. <laughs> Stumped them again. <clears throat> That's hard. Uh, okay, that maybe I could live in a suburb. Having grown up in the center of Manhattan. That's good. I could that actually... Enjoy sitting on my my out here with the squirrels, feeding squirrels by hand and nice. watching little birds and hummingbirds that I could actually not go crazy. That I actually would like it. That That's yeah. realization. That's great, man. Yeah, you're in this new season of your life. You're in the petting squirrels season of your life. I'm 54 now and yeah. I'm sort of, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm going downhill now. I think. No, I'm you're just 54. on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. You no, don't look a day downhill. over like that's 40, fine. dude. It's a yeah. whole new adventure. Jim thinks know. you're sexy, buddy. I, we, and I do too. Yeah, it's, you, you look, look good. good. If I, mean, I, I would never put you at 54. Oh, my gosh. You look yeah. great. Well, you know why? Because he's, mm. he's got a childlike heart and a childlike energy, and he has a I childlike agree. job, and you it's love the, what you do. It's the, it's the booze and the rock and roll. It gives me <laughs> hey, you know what? I love the fact that you, you did a fair amount of drinking in that documentary. You had a five-minute layover one time, and you went into the bar and slammed a beer. I was like, I like this guy. Of course. <laughs> we had to run a little, but you, know. you did run. Well, hey, everybody check out the uh, the award winning documentary, The Dwarven. You can rent it and buy it on Amazon Prime. There it is right there. If you still own a DVD player, Stefan's holding up a DVD, but I recommend you just stream it to your device or to your smart TV. And uh, man, we wish you the best with this new show coming out. I'll have to check in with our friend Josh and everybody check out Dwarven Forge. 
Facebook.com and follow Stefan on the socials. And if you're a gamer, be sure to donate to the everlasting Kickstarter campaigns that Dwarven Forge has. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, wow. man. Say, so we're, we're, we're making this thing work, and I want to thank everyone out there for supporting the show. We just celebrated a milestone, 100 episodes. We're, we're already on episode 103. We had uh, one of my childhood heroes and friends, Kenny Aronoff, was on episode 100. You guys really been supporting us. We've done about 45 episodes in the studio, Jim and I, with the guests, drinking coffee, just kibitzing, and then COVID hit, and I think we're up to 60-something episodes without being in the same room. And sometimes it's a little problematic with Zoom and the Wi-Fi and stepping on each other, but you guys have hung in there, and you are just making us feel great, and we're just going to keep on doing this until we have a 1,000 episodes so, guys, we really appreciate it. Stefan, thanks for coming, man. Hey, this was a blast, man. I hope you invite me back sometime. We're going to have you and Josh and Ann on at the same time. Yeah. Maybe we'll and do a live D&D game, and that'll be an episode. We should do it. Yeah. yeah. Roll some dice. I've never, done, I've never played them. Hey, if I was a character and Jim was a character, what would I be a knight? Would I be a thief? Would I be a cleric? What would I be? What would you want to be? I would most likely probably want to be... I think that knights are, it's too heavy, all the armor. I would want to be swift on my feet, like a, like a thief or a, someone. Or an, Maybe an elf, an elven fighter I, thief. I think an elven fighter thief. Yeah, because you can cross-pollinate the different things. What would Jim be? Barbarian. Oh, yeah, with a giant axe. axe. He's got yeah. the, or either a dwarf a fighter or a barbarian ranger. Oh, yeah, barbarian ranger. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. Now, what's or a character? Or, you know, if you're not DMing, what do you? What, what kind of character do you pick? I have a character uh, who's a, like a necromancer illusionist. He's like uh, Zaltar. Oh yeah, he casts spells. He casts illusionist spells. Yeah, but magic is very powerful. Like if you're up against some sort of a giant red dragon and your little dagger isn't piercing the hide, you can rely on some magic. Yeah, I could paralyze that dragon. Like like Joe Manganiello, when I had a red dragon coming at him, yeah. and he cast paralyzation, yeah. and it fell into a lake and drowned. That's incredible. Did Joe yeah. Manganiello keep his shirt on when he was playing the game? or what was? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I looked like yeah, that, I would never wear clothing, you know? Yeah, he's, yeah. He he's, he's, takes it very seriously. And uh, he's got a whole thing. Everyone in Hollywood... Plays in his dungeon. I bet they do. Yeah, like Tom Morello. Uh, oh, the, yeah. He plays with them <laughs> and uh, a bunch of, you know, Hollywood people. I think that if my girlfriend knew that Joe Maganello was playing D&D, she would go out right now and buy a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey and i get it he awesome. plays a dragonborn he plays an evil dragonborn character that breathes fire oh wow i, I just love and the cruel i Art love the endless creativity man it really is great but hey this conversation could go on forever but stefan thank you so much you guys uh check out the documentary start playing advanced D D. jim thank you so much for your time and talent and your love of marvel have a great weekend to all you guys out there thank you guys so much for the support uh, this really helps us be sure to subscribe i tell you every time just subscribe just share rate and review the show we really really appreciate it and tell a friend keep coming back for the good stuff and we'll see you next time thanks stefan thanks guys it's been fun this has been the rich redman show subscribe rate and follow along at richredman.com